Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for August 29, 2019. So I'm teaching a series entitled The Power of Fellowship, and this is part 71 of the series. This is important stuff. I've been teaching this for a while. I'm teaching us how to have fellowship with the Father and then how to have fellowship with other people. The title of today's message is Treating People the Way God Does. Simply put, God wants us to treat others the way He treats them. God wants us to love others the way He loves them. And I know that that's not necessarily all that easy. I shared with you yesterday how difficult people can be, how, you know, people do stupid things at, at the end of the day. I mean, they, they, they do things that are damaging towards relationships, and the Father still wants you to love them the way He loves them. And you, you will only be able to do this by His grace and by His power. So we've been learning, uh, you know, at least for the, this week, we've been flowing from John 17. This is the prayer that Jesus prayed for us. So let's, let's go back to John 17 again this morning. Once again, the title of today's message is Treating People the Way God Does. So this is what Jesus prayed for us. He said, he's talking to the Father. He said, I pray for them now. Now, I'm not praying for the people in the world. I'm praying for the people that you gave me because they're yours. All that I have is yours and all that you have is mine and my glory is seen in them. I'm going to deal with that today. He says, now, I will not stay in the world, but these followers that you've given me, they're going to stay in the world. So Holy Father, keep them safe by the power of your name, the, the name you gave me. Then they will be one as just as you and I are one. Now, he says, I'm coming to you now. I pray that these things while I'm still down here in the earth, I pray these things so that the followers that you gave me can have true happiness, the happiness that I have. I want them to be completely happy. I have given them your teaching. Now, the world has hated them. Because they don't belong to the world, just like I don't belong to the world. But I still pray for them. So he says, I, I pray not only for these followers that are here, but also for all of those who will come to me because of the, their teaching. Now, Father, I pray that all who believe in me can be one. That's the goal. All who believe in me can be one. You are in me. I am in you. And I pray that, all, that they could be one in us. Then the world will believe that you sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me. I gave them this glory. So they can be one, just as you and I are one. Now, I will be in them, and you will be in me, so we will be completely one. And then, here we go, then the world will know that you sent me, and that you love them just like you love me. The, peop the world is going to know that Jesus is real, that Jesus was the Son of God when we love them the way God loves us. That's the goal. The world is going to know that there's a God, and that we have a Savior. And that the Savior's name is Jesus when we love them the way God loves us. So what does this mean to you today? This is, once again, important stuff. So I'm going to focus in on the fact that Jesus said, all that I have is yours and all that you have is mine. He was like, listen, everything you have belongs to me. Everything I have belongs to you. And then he says, and now the glory that you've given unto me, I've given it unto them so they could be one in us. Thinking about, so the way Jesus lived is the way that we're supposed to live. I'll deal with that today. So I have one, let me see, four things to share with you on this morning. As I begin to share these, I want you to, to rid yourself of all distractions and open your heart and focus on, in on what God is saying through me. Four things. You ready? Here we go. Number one, Jesus saw himself as one with the Father. And because of it, although he was a human, he was able to live like God in the earth. Because he didn't walk around saying, well, I'm a human, I'm not God, this is what I... No, no, no. He saw himself as one with the Father. And because of it, he was able to live like God in the earth. He saw no separation between him and God. As a result, Jesus was able to embody his divine nature. Right? He was, he was walking around as a human conduit of the divine. Guess what? God expects the same of us. Jesus prayed for you and I to live the same way. When you see yourself as one with God, which is possible, when you see yourself as one with God and you open up your heart to the, the, the divine nature that God has placed on the inside of you, then you're able to live beyond the limits of mere humanity. I'm talking about loving people the way God loves them. I'm talking about dealing with the difficult. I'm talking about dealing with people that if it were not for God, you would have written them off a long time ago. I'm talking about dealing with people and making an effort to have a connection with people that if it were not for God, you, you would never make the effort. But God, if God is leading you to make the effort, then you, you make the effort because you're able to love beyond the limits of your humanity. Once you, live, once you embrace your heart to the fact that God is in me, God lives inside of me, I'm walking around with a God on the inside of me, then, and there's nothing he can't do, so there's nothing I can't do, at that point, the supernatural is natural to you. 
this we're supposed we are naturally supernatural when we give when we realize that we're born again and we give ourselves over to the holy spirit number two when you get a revelation of who god is i mean for real like god right you will also get a revelation of who you are like once you know that you're in christ and christ is in you once you discover jesus you discover yourself right and who you are is the same that Jesus was. Who you are is a human walking around with God on the inside of him or her. That's who you are. So the way Jesus walked around, that's the way you walk around. The way Jesus loved, that's the way you love. The way Jesus acted, that's the way you act. So since there's nothing God can't, excuse me, since there's nothing God can't do, and God lives in you, then there's nothing you can't do. And this means that if God is able to love people that are difficult, then you're able to love people that are difficult because God lives in you. That, you get it? So I'm talking about the supernatural love. I'm talking about walking in the supernatural so you can just be everything that God has called you to be, even in the area of your relationships. Number three, when you get to the point where you see yourself as one with God, you are able to imitate and emulate God in the earth. Since God loves humans, you know, us too, ourselves included, since God loves humans with unconditional love, and God lives inside of us, then we're able to love humans with unconditional love. Jesus basically said that everything the Father was is who he was, right? And most people don't have a problem with saying that, but then you fast forward to today, everything Jesus is is who you are. First John 4 and 17 says, as Jesus is, so are we in this world. Everything Jesus was and is is who you are. So everything that belonged to the Father belonged to the Son, Jesus, and everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to you. So you have to get this down in your heart to where you're like, you know what? There's no separation between me and God. I am one with God. I, I am everything Jesus was. I am everything Jesus is. And I'm, I am that today in this world. And when you get that down in your heart, you're able to love others the way God loves you. Because at that point, there's no separation between you and God. And at that point, you say, you know what? I'm going to be able to love others with the supernatural love because it's the Father who's living in me. He's giving me the words and he's performing the work. And now I can have the type of fellowship he wants me to have because he's the one that's doing it through me. Number four and finally, I close. I shared yesterday how flawed humans are. How people are just going to, you know, people will talk about you. They'll smile on your face and stab you in your back. Uh, people will do stupid stuff. I mean, at the end of the day, humans are flawed. And people are so flawed that you're not going to have the type of meaningful relationships with some people that are, that are difficult, right? Some people are so difficult that you're not going to have a meaningful relationship with them unless the Holy Spirit is involved. Jesus was able to love the way the Father loves because he saw himself as one with the Father and because he submitted to the Holy Spirit in all things. So if you want to love the way God loves, and really you should because God commands you to do it, then you got to submit to the Holy Spirit. And if you do, you can. You can. This is, this is actually possible because it's the Father living in you. Say this. Before we get to our confession, I want you to say this right now. Say, I am one with God. There is no separation between the Father and me. Now, if you can say that, if you can confess that with your mouth and believe it in your heart, then... Now you're at the point where you can yield to the Holy Spirit to really love people the way that God loves them, right? To where you can, you can love beyond, let me say it this way, you can love beyond your limits. You know why? Because God is living on the inside of you. And that's the goal. God wants us to treat people the way he treats them because he's actually the one that wants to do it through us. So will you yield to him? If you die to self daily, pick up your cross and follow him, he will lead you to do things that in the flesh you don't want to do. He would lead you to have relationships with people that in the flesh you would rather just ignore. But he'll do it because he is love and he lives in you. You get it? This is important stuff. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to, to declare this over your life. Let me just say this real quick, though, as I close. The reason why this is so important, if you go back to John 17, is that when we love others the way that God loves them, and we're one with the Father and then we're one with them, Basically, in Jesus' prayer, you said, then the world is going to know that there's a God. Then the world is going to know that you sent me. Then the world is going to know that Jesus is real. All of this is going to happen because of us, because we get to show people what God is like and we do it 
when we love people, especially those who are difficult to love. Lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me to see myself as one with you. Everything you have belonged to Jesus. Everything Jesus has belongs to me. <laughs> Jesus was one with you, and I am one with him. This means I'm one with you, Father. And now you want me to be one with other believers on this planet as well. I declare that I am. As we are all one, we get to show the world what you're like. And unbelievers will come to know you through our love. This is important to you, so it is important to me. I make every effort to love others the way you love them and to connect with them in true fellowship. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org and sign up to get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. There's a sub subscribe button there, right? When you click on it, you're going to get an email from me every day and all my notes will be in your email inbox for free. So sign up. Listen, walk right now into this day determined that you're going to love the way God loves because God is loving. He lives in you. And then do me a favor, share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline with your friends. I love you and God loves you. God bless you.